verifying that the agenda has been posted in three public places, right? And on the website, right? And emailed to interested parties. Harlan, are you getting emails yet? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get it, but you know, it's like it's coming from my brother or something. You know, I got to talk to him and ask him about that. If he's sending it or whether, I check my spam and it's not going there. Huh. You know, there's nothing in there. Okay. Uh, here. But, but you're here, and that's the main thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone have any additions to the agenda at this time? No. I think. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> The regular? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right, so we got those. Since um, Pat Harvey is not here, uh, she's in um, Florida for another week or so, and Tom Schnabel is not on the board anymore, we can't address the minutes from the last couple meetings because um, we need to have at least two out of the three of us here to do that, so we'll table the minutes until next meeting when presumably Pat will be here. And then, so we'll look at And we don't have, oh. I was just gonna ask, when are the minutes from town meeting approved? They were in that pile also, but seeing as there's just um, okay. one of us here. We so next meeting. Are, yeah. No. And they're on the website, right? Uh, not until they're approved. Unapproved? Yeah. Are they unapproved on the website? Or no. I don't no. Well, no, they're not legally, the they should be. Mm. You can read about town meeting in Lassie's Hill. <laughs> <laughs> if that helps. All right. Well, they're not on there yet, so we'll we'll um, work on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the guest we have mentioned here is not in the room yet, so we could move on to Joan. Oh, I get to go first? Yeah, you get to go first. Mm, okay, I'll stand up so you can talk. Um, just a lot, of, I have a whole bunch of updates. Um, some of these you've heard about before, but are updates. Um, Bethel Mountain Road, Federal Highway project uh, submitted reimbursement for the town's direct uh, expenses that was submitted on February 26th um, and they're reviewing it now these are expenses associated with sites 1 1 B and 2 um, which is essentially the whole upper and lower Bethel right. Mountain Road uh, the total we submitted for reimbursement was five hundred eighty eight thousand seven hundred ten dollars most of which was engineering fees um, uh, the FEMA work, um, the work that has been completed to date for as of really last uh, start of the winter are still under review by the FEMA folks for reimbursement. Um, and meanwhile, we'll be starting up work on the uncompleted work um, whenever uh, Cooter and his crew and weather are ready uh, for that. Talking with Cooter and he can fill you in more if you want more information on that. But uh, there's five roads, basically, where work still needs to be done. It's Maple Hill, Wing Farm Road, Jerusalem Hill, uh, Mount Cushman, and West Young. And there are a couple of small contracts out that were uh, let out last fall where the work didn't start. And also that started before so, um, And then we won't have as much FEMA oversight on that part. Um, we will have had by then uh, their estimate of how much money they're prepared to reimburse the town for that work. And then we either just spend that much money or if the town decides they want to do more work, it will be on our level to do that. Um, so we will get reimbursed for that as well. Under a slightly different formula. Um, we have two Upper Bethel Mountain Road projects that are in the works for the coming season. Uh, one you know about already is the, the culvert on Rogers Brook, um, which is near, sort of near the Bethel, towards the Bethel town line. Um, we'll hear in May, if not sooner, about whether our grant request to the Better Roads program has been funded to do that work. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of 
dollars for that. Um, we have, I, have, I think we have a really good chance of getting that uh, grant. And in, a in addition, uh, the Nason Brook Culvert, which is the one just below Terry's house, um, that one, if you remember, was restabilized with FEMA money back in 2016, I think it was, with the understanding that eventually that culvert was going to need to be replaced. And Cricket and um, Cooter have looked at that recently, and it's deteriorating a lot. So uh, Cricket is just finishing up the design work. We had a grant from <coughs> two years ago now to do that. And she's finishing up, finishing up that design work. And the idea is that the uh, Cooter and Cricket have been talking about is that um, if, it, if the timing works out and the funding works out, um, we, I would apply for a structures grant to do the construction on um, that one and then bid out both jobs on Upper Bethel Mountain Road uh, together to one contractor because it's going to be complicated with um, getting a, a temporary bypass around both projects and then also, you know, all the complications that go with uh, flagging and traffic control. Um, you want to elaborate on that at all? You did perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we'll know a little bit more about that. Um, uh, around April or May, where we have the funding lined up, and uh, then we'll take stuff out to bid. Um, West Hill Bridge, do you remember that uh, we got a design grant from Green Mountain National mm -hmm. Forest to get the engineering done, and that's for the replacement of the bridge? Um, and I've been working on the RFP, and that's just about ready to be advertised. It might be uh, put out um, on various websites by the end of the week, and then it'll probably be in the Herald next week. Um, we have to go through a bid process, but fortunately it's just an RFP, it's not an RFQ, where we have to get qualifications first before we can then choose someone. And that's for the design work? Cost. This is just for design. <laughs> But also, um, sometime in the past few months, I submitted, it was the end of August, I think, I submitted uh, a grant application to Federal Highway Administration Federal Lands Access Grant, which is a grant program specifically to improve access to uh, national forest land and other publicly owned, federally publicly owned land. And so we got that grant as well, and that will pay for uh, construction of the bridge. Yeah. So we'll do sign first and then new bridge presumably will go in sometime next year, uh, 2021. Um, also working on the annual VTrans Highway Financial Plan. That's something we do every year. It's a very fun process. <laughs> <laughs> they essentially go through our highway budget and we talk about what plans and needs the town has for the coming year and various other issues that VTrans needs to discuss with towns. That would be a great thing um, if you're able to attend sure. and get an idea of how that works. So um, actually I have some. When is that? Uh, it hasn't been set yet. VTrans okay. will be in touch with us and suggest a meeting date, so I'll let you know as soon as I hear. All right. There are two or three um, things in there that both of you need to sign that are associated with submitting the financial plan. Um, and ask me any questions if you have any about what the numbers say. Basically, all I do is go very quick, very carefully through the highway budget that was just passed and reformat it in the way that VTrans wants to see it. Um, and it's all essentially the same information. Um, you've seen them many times yeah. before, I didn't, so you know. Um, what else? Oh, uh, uh, the Mount Cushman culvert replacement. That's been in the works for a while. The design was finished by Cricket uh, last year sometime. Uh, construction bidding should take place uh, sometime in April, May at the latest, so that we can get that replacement done this season. Um, if you remember, we have a structures grant to pay for 90% of the cost, mm -hmm. of what we expect the cost to be. We won't know until we get the bids in what it's actually going to cost. Um, and we have a partnership, will pay for the 10% match. And they'll also cover some of the costs of construction management. Um, 
the town will hold the contract and we'll work together with my partnership to put out the bid when the time comes. So that'll be happening this summer, which is nice, because um, that's been in the works for quite some yeah. time. <clears throat> and then last but not least, um, this is more of a question and need for information than anything else, but um, a few weeks ago, um, Chrissy and I talked to Chrissy and Ricky Gaudet, who own the house a couple, a couple doors down from us. They have a rather serious erosion problem where their sewer line from the house goes out to the brook and what I believe it connects to a sewer line that kind of parallels the brook. Terry, is that right? Yeah. And goes down to that manhole in the parking lot. Yeah, the sewer line ties in. There's another manhole right in their backyard. They're a oh, long right. way from the brook. Yeah, but then you can see where it comes out where there's a whole lot of uh, erosion happening. And I walked along the length of that brook. Um, the sewer line kind of parallels the brook all the way down. Is that right? And then it kind yeah. of angles off at some point. It cuts right across from to the firehouse from the manhole and the parking ride. Right. But that stretched down, I think, to the manhole and the parking ride up to where we have that sort of cave in, which is a FEMA site up here. Um, Somebody needs to look at it and sort of tell us what's going on and whether so I think some bank stabilization work needs to be done there um, because if it's threatening the, the sewer connection up here, it seems to be threatening the one. It's, it's quite a ways from it down there. Okay. Well, you can definitely see where the bank is eroding. Right. Area. They say they keep losing chunks of their backyard. So whether the sewer line is involved or not, I'm not sure, but um, it's not. There's still some issue. Um, all along this length. Jaron Borg visited their property sometime in the last year and gave them permission to rip wrap the bank. But as we all know, when you rip wrap the bank in one particular spot, it just sends the problem <laughs> downstream. Yeah. So it, I, I think it makes sense for us to maybe have Jaron come look at the whole length of it and just tell us what he thinks is going on and what kind of solutions we need to be dealing with. Is that an Irene leftover? Um, I wasn't. Is it? I don't know. Is what it is, Terry? <clears throat> I think it's just, you know, it's an unstable stream to begin right. with. You know, we, we saw that all the way even further up. Right. The palace, you know, up the hill. So, uh, I'm. Yeah, yeah, I think we're beyond any any um, Irene stuff, Irene sure, stuff on that. But I'm just so, curious yeah. if yeah. that was part of that. Yeah. Um, you could ask Cricket if she could take a look at it. I imagine, though, maybe the thing to do is Jaren. have Jaren come yeah. and just walk the whole thing with us this spring and sort of see if there's something we should be doing. So This one over here needs to get fixed this year. Right, yeah. It's really right close. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Right over here by the, yeah. Yeah, it's within a couple of feet. All right. All right. Yeah, uh, I know Jared's looked at it once, right? Were you part of that? No. no. Well, I think he needs to come back and sort of give us some more the detail on what's, yeah. the, what's the proper thing to do, especially in con the context of the Washed rest of the... Washed out behind that smack wall. Right. Mm -hmm. went up, yeah. Went up right up there. Yeah, just, just above the little house there. there. That's, that's really yeah. part of the problem. Dean, I have a question for John. I'm sorry I came in late, but did you give an update on the um, Breakneck Brook projects? Um, no. No. No, I really don't have any information on that. All right. I've been doing some of my own research, and um, Jaron Borg has seen that. I am with the VTrans um, Route 100 issue because, well, not many people know, but the April 15th flood that we had has um, basically created a, um, uh, a diversion in right next to my property. And I believe, and a lot of people have told me it is threatening Route 100 mm -hmm. because basically I've got a dam there. Mm -hmm. um, there's an old culvert and um, I, you know, I, I have had an uh, engineer there um, from USDA, um, I can't remember his name, oh, yeah. the guy from White River, um, and he set something up. I just, that's one of the reasons I came here is I wanted an update on what was going to be happening because it was tabled last year and 
now it's this year and um, is that something that you can I can look into all I know is that the latest was we got I think you got the same letter it was months ago now sometime last year where they said okay we've seen the site you know we'll look into it and then they'll determine what if anything they would be prepared to fund and I haven't heard a word since then well from the engineer who showed up I was there um, he basically said that the remediation is only 40 feet of the stream, which is kind of a joke. But, you know, the, I, I kind of, I think what's going to happen eventually is that culvert is, will fail um, and, and or get blocked. I will be flooded out again, obviously, but Route more importantly, taken Route 100 out. will be gone. And uh, because if you look at the stream, it's basically split out. And there's a lot of trees now that are at risk of dying because they're just they're underwater. Mm -hmm. They die, they fall. It makes it worse. Yeah. The culvert, <clears throat> and we have a nightmare. Um, so I just want to keep it on. On the, yeah. On the, the um, more of a priority than I that I'm hearing it is. Guy comes to look at the brook over here, maybe we can talk him up there. To yeah. that too. Yeah. Checking it out. I don't know who sets the priorities, but I I'm just telling you where, where I think it's yeah. at and uh, V Trans has already seen the issue. They yeah. they know it's a problem. It seems that that coming from them would be that the the biggest guns in terms of it pushing isn't things a big along. Gun, but yeah. they, it's an impossible solution like you can't do a temporary bridge there that's it's one of those things where they don't want to do it because it's so because it's hard. A big project yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I get it but it's also you know I think it's going to be down the road I think it's going to be you know the next major flood the, if, if that happens and we do know that yeah, it, they come more frequently now not, not only that, but, you know, <laughs> rip-wrapping that bank would, you know, obviously save my property. And I would do it in a heartbeat <laughs> if I could. Right. Yeah. But there's so many agencies involved, they all get in the way. Yeah. And it's, it's very frustrating because... I hear you. I know... <laughs> I know the solution personally, but anyway, that's all I have to say about that. But. All right, thank you. Um, Joan, thank you, Joan. Um, library, did anything you want to well, speak we about? We have a trustees meeting tomorrow after six o'clock. And there is a program scheduled for Thursday. I don't know if we'll discuss that later, but anyway, there are no stuff around town about that program. Which is, what? what's the program? It is a program dealing with uh, horses and oxen on farms years ago. Sounds like a pretty interesting thing. And the person coming is... Uh, Carl Russell, 7 o'clock, Thursday. Okay. Cooter, you got any, we got the truck back. Any other news from the highway yeah. world? Both our trucks are back, and we're getting ready for mud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's here. It's here. here. <laughs> Terry? Terry? Picks one lake got not long ago, but he marked it today, so we're gonna do it Wednesday because good chance it's gonna rain tomorrow. I don't want to get into a real mess. So, I'm sorry, Terry, couldn't play your two leaks you said you had? Yeah, I fixed mm -hmm. one by North Shore and we got another one down by the cemetery. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we had the, um, back on to the guest, Rachel, you're here now. We kind of skipped ahead of you, because, um, but now you're here. What would you like to speak about tonight? Sure, sure. It's a final report um, for Envision Rochester. Um, 
and I apologize for being late, guys. Okay, so I've just come from a meeting over in Stockbridge, and I just wanted to update the select board on the initiative that um, we've been working on for a while now with uh, different interested parties and stakeholders with the school board. So I, I'm not sure if everyone's had a chance to look at the results, but there were five different groups that came out of a year-long process, a community consensus process, and one of which was the uh, repurposing of the school board. So that's one of the committees, but there's four others, agriculture, commerce, um, arts, culture, uh, and a combined one with uh, seniors, youth, and, and uh, young families. So there's, um, the results are there. Whether these different committees have legs, as Pat Harvey said uh, several months ago, time will tell. But these are independent, up and running small groups now who are developing action plans. There is a, a site on the White River Valley calendar that will post these reports and Vic and I are combining um, all of the emails for the people who showed up over since March 2019. So all those folks are going to be together. This particular community website or uh, workshop had approximately 48 people show up, which is a pretty good turnout. So is this the one at Pierce Hall that you're talking about? The on the 13th, 13th of okay, Feb. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So these, all these different, um, the five different uh, small groups, they're essentially action action groups. So they're identifying low-hanging fruit, short-term, long-term uh, goals and priorities. But they're all independent and they're all doing their own thing now. And the, the idea is that they help facilitate what the select board's going to be doing and the, and the planning commission, hopefully in coordination with the town plan. So, and, and other initiatives, I'm sure, will come out of that, other partnerships. So that took a year. To, to, to come together and, and it's it's up and running now. So hopefully that will have legs and it'll, it'll keep going. Um, there's the commerce um, small group, I think is coming up with some really interesting initiatives, one of which has to do with a key question asked last July, and that was about the impact on Airbnb on, on the community. So. There's some research I'm going to be handing to, to Vic and, and that particular group that I've done um, that I hope will help in terms of ideas for revenue generation. So now, in, in, in my view, uh, it's the select board's time to really shine here because you can, you can um, step up and embrace some of these initiatives or you know come up with your own and maybe through the establishment of an economic development committee that's directly accountable to the select board and therefore to the people, you guys can actually get some action going, you know? Um, I'd like so, to add to that, Rachel. Yeah, Doc. Me. Yeah, sure. Um, I had come up in, with an idea, I was in part of that group, <clears throat> of possibly expanding the um, uh, grant writing position in Rochester. Um, there's a lot of things that are becoming uh, unfunded um, in a recreation area, and a lot of ideas that have come up that have purple, <coughs> percolated, and uh, time and again, it's we come up the short end of the stick on the budget. Um, and I would like to encourage the select board to possibly expand a grant writing position to include some of these things that have been identified um, because I don't see it getting funded in tax base. Um, the skate space, the um, uh, tennis courts, etc. And I think if we, I know Joan's done, she's, she's got her full hours in, mm -hmm. and she's more directed towards roads and waterways, et cetera. But there is other grants available, and I know during the, the town hall meeting, um, you had said, you know, any, any volunteers out there, <laughs> you know, for grant writing? And quite frankly, I think a, bang, a, a better bang for the buck is to hire 
a high-end grant writer to get some of this stuff taken care of. You, you spend money, but you make money off of that person down the road. And I, I want to encourage the select board to possibly look at that, a position like that. Because we need, we need the funds if we're going to continue to have the, these other services. Yeah. So to follow um, up on that, I'd just um, like to finish, if I could, the, the report, and then you guys can comment, if you don't mind. To follow up on that, I'm with Dean on that, and Bethel has expanded their select board, and they've hired a city manager whose responsibility is also to do grant writing. So that's a model that perhaps Rochester can think about down the line. I'm sure you've talked about expansion before. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I uh, just want to focus briefly on the school board. Um, I've been attending those meetings pretty regularly now, and we have a, a building committee report that's in the works. There are two, and we're combining those. I'm actually editing that um, for, on behalf of the school board, and that will be presented to the school board soon, and then um, that will then become available to the public. The school board is working on identifying a facilitator who could do a public gathering for them sometime in May. And that's going to be a community meeting for folks in Stockbridge and Rochester to come together and really suss out some of the options for the former high school and some broader budget questions. So that's happening in May sometime. That date has not been um, determined yet. Uh, but on the other side of some programs that Envision Rochester has been working on with the school board, both schools, um, we've been able to facilitate the donation of uh, two series of literacy books. And the school board, if anyone's looked at the budget, you see they're focusing on literacy in a big way. Um, so we've been able to find uh, a local author. Um, and these are cutting edge literacy books, brand new off the presses. And so both schools are getting both sets, series one and two. Um, and that's, a, that's a, a need that the PTO and the two principals identified, and we've been able to fill that for them. Um, I, I don't know if Vic has time to give an update on the community grants, but that's in the works. Uh, him and Catherine Shankman have worked really hard on getting Rochester on the map for potential uh, grants from the Federal Reserve of Boston. So that's ongoing. Um, and finally, the, the question that I had coming from a meeting over in Stockbridge is if we have any sense of what kind of impact the new climate declaration volunteer committee would have on the schools and the budget, I don't know the answer to that, but that's something I'd like to put out there just as a, something for us to consider over time. And uh, I'll take any questions. That's about it. Terry, hey, you had something you wanted to say? Well, I like Dean. There's a fire department grant out there. Somebody's got the time. To, they're quite intense to do, but they're there every year. Uh, I get, you know, little perks from Sanders that send them to me. But, I mean, it involves a couple days worth of schooling all day. And then you got to really know how to write the grants. I mean, there is grant writers, like Dean said, because even to get off subject, when we looked into buying our groomer, there was a guy that would write the grants for like $1,000. And uh, he, he wouldn't take it off. He wasn't a good chance he'd going to get it. Mm -hmm. He'd be honest with you. It's just that because we didn't have hotels and stuff, it wasn't likely that we would get a grant for that type of thing. Had there been hotels, he would have taken it on, and I would have guaranteed we would have got probably quite a bit. But there's other things. Yeah. yeah. There, there is a course uh, that I'm taking uh, March 30th in Bethel University. It's a three-hour, one-day course mm -hmm. in grant writing. I'm assuming it's. So you're gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say I can do it. I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm interested, mm -hmm. because I. Th I see the need. Yeah. But I really think that if we had someone that had as 
is S together, mm -hmm. then we could get a lot done. And I think, you know, you're looking at, I'm, I'm actually gonna ask the instructor if he knew anyone that would be, you know, available, what the cost would be, et cetera. But I really think we're missing a lot of these grants by not asking for not them. asking for them and, and and with through recreation or the fire department or any of the needs of the town and i really i really think this is an a, this is an important agenda that we should consider so i i will um go to this course and i'll report back yeah great um i'm not going to come out of a three-hour course being an excellent grant writer but i want to know what the what the what yeah. it entails and who's you know what what makes a good grant etc and you know we can go from there i mean i'm willing, i would be willing to take on a recreational mm -hmm. end of that but i'm i'm not saying i i can do it um but i i'm interested because i think the town should be interested as well yeah if it wasn't for the grants we wouldn't get most of the big road projects done that we to get done. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so we certainly if we, couldn't afford to if we expand no. the no. position, yeah. it, it might behoove us to do that. I know it's more money, but some of that money comes back. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming Joan pays for her salary in the grants, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean. We already asked that, her if she had more time and she's maxed out. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> you know, it, it may it may make sense to seek someone else. Mm -hmm. Not to replace you. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Uh, um, in my the business from which I retired, we used to write a lot of grants. Uh, and my experience in that is that most grants, as as Terry suggested, they're they're targeted mm -hmm. in a particular area and you have to you really have to kind of know whatever that is there's a lot of money out there in small town grants there's a lot of them um, but they're competitive and, and you have to know how to write them right. I, I think maybe what should happen is uh, is uh, we should look at what resources we have in the town if you know about recreation for instance put put a little small group of people and see if they could give Joan the support that she needs or have a little more of a uh, of a grant writing muscle and priority in the town, however it was done, and find out whether maybe you should bring in a guy, maybe we can do it with volunteers, I don't know. But make it more and more important because we're getting a lot of money. Joan's getting a lot of money. I mean, that's a lot of money coming in from these grants yeah. the way you're doing it. And if you could expand that into different areas of the town's needs. So I don't have an answer for that, uh, except that I think it's really a worthy thing to, yeah. to pursue yeah, one yeah. way or another, mm -hmm. whether it's a small committee or go hire a guy, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But Rachel? I think it's a good idea. Well, uh, this is a conversation I had with Norm Christensen last year, and I'm on the rec committee. So um, I pulled together a whole slew of resources for him, but he, you know, he's struggling like everyone else. So yeah. I agree with the fellows. The more focused that could be, and there are resources out there. Mm -hmm. And Norm's definitely open to it. I mean, he's, he's hungry for help. Um, so. So it's yeah. good to see us come full circle. Well, it's a job of work, though. I think you really need to go to some of these classes to learn and all. Yeah. I know, like, the fire department ones, you don't go for the day or two classes, you aren't going to get them. But that's a lot of time. Any you have something you want to say? Well, and it's just to the recreation uh, grants or to any any of the grants. I think it, it, it has something to do with the strength of the committee of people that are working together. Um, you know probably that Roster has been very successful at um, applying a lot of energy to grants that you know didn't they didn't get at first actually it took them two or three years before they started to get some of the grants that we have been fortunate in getting this last year and we've gotten quite a bit of money um, so I think it takes that kind of persistence and um, we ourselves are have been you know writing grants for our own projects to help offset um, some of the development that we're doing that has to do with facade improvements and tax tax codes that um, tax credits that offset the code improvements that we're making to the thing. So it's and we didn't get it the first time, so we're doing it again. I mean, it's going to take that kind of thing, you know, groups um, being immersed and committed. 
I think it's the only way it goes. There is, I think, a lot of receptivity from the state to see these initiatives, and they love it when they you know, see this kind of commitment. So um, it's just a matter of that, getting on the track, getting on track with it. And it would be lovely to have a professional grant writer at times, just somebody that we could. I bet you there is a resource, actually. There's probably some, some resources out there for um, you know, somebody that we can be in contact with. But it's going to have to come from the individual people, yeah. I believe. I was just thinking that one of the resources that might help you is the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. They mm -hmm. may be able to mm -hmm. give you a uh, point in the right direction for grant writing and things like that. Um, well, I'd be really interested to hear back from you from your experience at the Bethel University, Dean, and then to go with yeah. some specific pointed questions and see what you can harvest out of that. I'm going to read. I wrote an email to the instructor, and I'm looking up his, his name right now, uh, last night. And I, you know, um, the question I come to is after this, uh, this class, which is, you know, three hours one day, um, you know, is, is he or someone that he knows possibly available? And I would be an envoy if the, the um, select board deemed it necessary to, you know, explore this. I could be an envoy to ask him. Well, definitely gather information and see okay. what you can find out. Okay. Yeah. Jeanette? Um, even if you hire a hired gun grant writer, which do not come cheap, mm -hmm. the people, whether it's recreation or buildings or fire department or whoever, are still going to have to put all the data together, write the rough draft, because the grant writers only polish and submit. They don't, you know, you don't just say, I have this idea, and then they take it and do it all that there's going to have to be a lot of volunteer um, help in getting all the information together. Yeah, if it was easy to just hire someone to make you more money than you're paying them, that would be... <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I mean, you're going to... I mean, they start at 50 bucks an hour for mm -hmm. someone that doesn't have much of a reputation. They, they come in along the line of attorney's fees. Oh, you, now you got sure, John wanting to raise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 you something you want to say? <laughs> I was going to say I do have a thing there that Julie signed me up for for this to meet with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and mm -hmm. I can maybe ask them about yeah, something yeah. like that when I go to that. So <clears throat> can do that. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you for the energy and interest, and let's, um, let's keep the topic alive and, um, and moving. Yeah. Um, yeah good. So, um, speaking of people doing things, we'll, um, we have a bunch of appointments to, to settle after the, um, the end of our yearly cycle of municipal um, activity um, in terms of the assistant town clerk treasurer that's your job Julie to um, to appoint someone I presume you probably will um, appoint Becky to that again yes. yep and um, I would like to um, move to appoint Julie here as our select board clerk to do what she's doing right now does that sound good to you Frank sure does yeah all in favor aye aye all right and um, Joan, you're hired. We don't have to appoint you. And that's on there. Um, we appointed um, Dylan Dudley as the constable to fill out the, the vacancy there. And now that we've come to the beginning of the year, I'd move to appoint him as a constable going forward. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And um, the. We're going to leave the second open? Yeah, we got to work on that one. Yeah, we don't really need, we're not required to have a second constable. Okay. Um, moving on to the, on the planning board, there's two people that have come up, that Sandy Haas and Julie Martin, and um, 
I don't see them here to say no, so I'd move to reappoint <laughs> them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They're here, though. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. In favor. Okay. <laughs> they can always complain later. Yeah. Pardon me, I couldn't hear. Are they appointed? Yes. 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 So Sandy Haas and Julie Martin. Martin. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, down to the zoning administrator. I've been filling that position, and if you want to move to <laughs> burden me with that again, I'll I'll take that. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um, Terry and the, the fire guys, you guys do that amongst yourselves. Right. Yep. Um, up until now, we've had the select board fulfill the position as a water commissioners and sewer commissioners, so I guess we'll probably continue on and Keep doing in that. that respect. All right. Um, I would be willing to continue on as the road commissioner if you'd nominate it's, me for that or yeah, appoint me for that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Go um, for it. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of in a learning phase here, yeah, so you yeah. gotta. <laughs> well, you do you want do you want something? Do you want <laughs> not yet? Do you like to? <laughs> not yet. I don't need that. <laughs> Baptized by fire, I'm not ready for that. All right. So then I'll I'll stick with being the on-site wastewater officer, and see, unless you like the sound of that. Well, I'll no. I'll, I'll shirt tail you for a while. All right. Okay. Really, yeah, on here. Thank you for being here. Yep. Um, Annie, are you willing to be the Two Rivers Ottaquicho? Adequichi Regional Commission um, Transportation and Planning representative for the town? Yes. All right. As long as you'll be my second. Okay, I guess I will. So, <laughs> yes, I will. And that gives us a guaranteed date night at least once a month. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, um, I move to appoint John White as the health officer. I've talked with him about that, and he's willing to well, continue doing that. It's not up to anyway. Is oh, it? no, you're right. It's not up. That's to 2021. Um, I think Paula Doherty would um, agree to continue as the town service officer. Definitely agree with it. With that. And Rick, I mean, Vic, you graciously offered to continue on as the emergency management director to, in light of the current um, dynamic situation. Yep. Yep. We'll do it. Thank you. And I'm your emergency alternative, alternative, so I'll stay to do that. Um, and Rob, the emergency management coordinator. It's like you finally have some stuff to coordinate. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome to the job. Are you continue on with that? I got my red light on. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Not to make light of it. Um, he is not here, but I think Marvin Harvey would be willing to continue on as our energy coordinator. But we also have now the Quintown Energy Committee that has um, mm. um, been born. And I would like to appoint um, Jeff Kephart as a, a member of that committee. And I know there's a few other people that are interested, but at least we have someone officially officially on that. Yep. I'd second that. And Sorry, that would be the Quintown Energy Committee that Two Rivers out of has been um, inspiring, trying to um, coordinate efforts in the valley, not just town by town. So we've had uh, a preliminary meeting, and there was enough interest showed that I think that's going to um, get some legs, as they put it, and, and have something happen. Um, um, Jim Bowen had previously offered to be the recycling coordinator, and so I'd move to, um, to reappoint him as that. Second. Martha, are you willing to be on the park committee still? Yes, with one, one proviso. I can no longer, uh, with my rheumatoid arthritis, I can no longer handle getting the Christmas tree up and all that stuff. I'm going to have to find somebody else to do it for Oh, well, me. you can mm -hmm. find help. But I, I still help. plan the 4th of July all right. and all that other all right. stuff. All yes. right. Great. Thank you. All right. Put that to there. Um, I'm Tim Crowley. I don't know how hard that's been for him to be the stagecoach representative, but I'm sure that he would be willing to continue on with that, so I'd appoint him to that. Um, Vic, uh, the White River Valley Ambulance representative, is that still something you're willing to take on? Yes. Yeah, thank you. And um, we have Jim Bowen as your alternative sure. for that. And we'll. Um, 
one more time around, let Norm Smith take the role as our tree warden in town, and Angus McCusker as our E911 maintenance man, and Nick Picuto as the Green Up Day coordinator. And let's see, we've got um, Norm Christensen is still um, seems willing to be our website administrator. And Larry Pleasant as a scenic byway representative. And John White as our EC Fiber representative. I'm sorry, I couldn't write that. As I, I'm back on Norm Christensen. What, what was he doing? He's the website administrator. Okay, town website. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And after that, it was Larry Pleasant for the scenic byway representative. Okay, thank you. And John White for the EC fiber representative. Okay, thank you. And last but not least, I moved to re um, re um, represent uh, our town's official newspaper with the Herald of Randolph. Thank you. Yeah. And this, um, let's see here. Um, I've been the um, chair of the select board now, and Patty's not here, and you're the first day, I guess. <laughs> uh, by default, I'll stay the, if that's all right with you. That's fine with okay. me. Okay, <laughs> all right. Not to be selfish about it, but no, you no, want not you, a bit. You're I'm not going to fight it. with you. <laughs> all right. Um, so in terms of appointing, as I uh, mentioned with um, Vic and, and Rob about the importance of the um, the current situation. We do have a, um, a statement here that the town has prepared regarding the coronavirus um, situation. Um, Mason, you had something oh, that I'll you wanted to after. Yeah, all right. Okay. So I'll, there are copies of this here on the table, and we'll have this posted on the website, but here we have it. Um, um, verbally, with widespread news coverage of the spread of the coronavirus, COVID-19, Rochester Select Board has decided to make certain suggestions to inform residents regarding the prudent actions to minimize community spread of the virus in our town. We've been in touch with Gifford Medical Center and the White River Valley Ambulance Service, as well as the state of Vermont, and have established a local task force to coordinate efforts in town, particularly as it relates to our older residents, those who are mo most at risk. Please regularly check Front Porch Forum, the town website, and the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Community Facebook page for further updates. We should remember that Rochester is a tourist destination. Interstate travel on Route 100 together with the number of Airbnbs, local shops, and restaurants means that we have a number of people of unknown origins in our town regularly. The most vulnerable residents to the coronavirus are the elderly or those with pre-existing health conditions such as heart disease or a compromised respiratory system. So special care should be taken if you are one of these. We suggest that any non-essential public events be canceled, avoided, or postponed for 30 days. Anyone developing cold or flu symptoms should self-quarantine at home for two weeks in order to avoid the possibility of spreading the virus into the community. It would also be prudent to make sure you have on hand two weeks of food staples and prescription medications in case of self-quarantine due to illness. A volunteer network is being organized to help deliver groceries or medications to people self-quarantining at home. If you're interested in volunteering for this effort, please contact the town clerk. As you may know, but I'll read off, the symptoms are um, a sore throat and cough, and fever, and difficulty breathing or lung congestion. And please note, lung congestion is the most serious symptom. These are the recommendations from the federal government's Center for Disease Control. 
There is currently no vaccine to present coronavirus disease, 2019, COVID-19. The best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to this virus. However, as a reminder, the CDC always rec recommends everyday preventative actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases, including avoiding close contact with people who are sick, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, stay home when you're sick, cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw that tissue in the trash, clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces using a regular household cleaning spray or wipe, follow the CDC's recommendations for using a face mask, but CDC does not recommend that people who are well wear a face mask to protect themselves from the respiratory diseases, including COVID-19. Face masks should be used by people who show symptoms of COVID-19 to help prevent the spread of the disease to others. The use of face masks is also crucial for healthcare workers and people who are taking care of someone in close settings at home or in a healthcare facility. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after going to the bathroom, before eating, and after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. If soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Most vodka is not going to work, you guys. Yeah. Always wash hands with soap and water if hands are visibly dirty. Should it be determined that you need testing, the U.S. government has, has released this assurance that Medicare will cover the cost of testing. Your Medicare Part B medical insurance covers a test to see if you have coronavirus. This test is covered when your doctor or a health care provider orders it if you get the test on or after February 4, 2020. You usually pay nothing for Medicare-covered clinical diagnostic laboratory tests. And then we have some phone numbers of the town office and the Gifford Health Center and the uh, town clinic and uh, of course the ambulance is always 911. So again, this is kind of, um, I'm sure you all heard this, but um, maybe not everybody has. And if you know anyone that should have it, please um, spread the word. Mason. Thank you, Rob. That's a really fantastic prediction, and it would seem like the, uh, the official town newspaper should publish that for this Thursday. That should be just mandatory as our town official newspaper. They'll make sure Martha uh, I, has a I copy guess, of it. I can summarize what they're saying here, and I will bring the copy to our editor. I can't, yeah. I can't hear it. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the, the whole idea with the uh, Front Porch Forum is great. Uh, I myself am not into the Facebook thing, but I understand there's quite a bit of followers in Rochester on Facebook. Um, yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, Frank, welcome aboard. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, I wanted to speak about appointments real quickly. Um, uh, this year's uh, annual town meeting had a good turnout. We, we before uh, the meeting started, there was some conversation about a, a, some young families that were unable to because of child care issues. But when it comes to appointments, is it possible to, at this stage of the game to start looking at our annual report to be able to explain how appointments come about and encourage people, since the uh, annual report is two weeks before the meeting, to be able to think about these open positions and to actually come to this particular meeting when they are appointed, if they have an interest in them, so we can expand uh, our community into these appointments. So that would be my suggestion there. Um, thank you. Jeanette. Um, in getting back to this, mm -hmm. um, I see you are suggesting any non-essential public events be canceled, avoided, or postponed for 30 days. The library. the library has 10 programs scheduled in the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming from this, the recommendation is we postpone all of these. Yep. That's, that's the recommendation. It's not a mandate, but it's, it's the... Um, in light of the constant barrage of information we're getting about it and the way that this can sneak up into a community that's in the, the high proportion of elderly people in the town, it's, you know, I guess that's your decision as a librarian, but that's our recommendation. And we'll be talking about it at the trustees meeting, I'm sure, yeah. but yeah. Um, 
I would tend to agree with you. Yeah. Can I speak to that a little bit? Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, I think one of the most important things for people in the town to understand is that this is really serious. You know, even, even with my age and wisdom, I couldn't get my children to get serious about this. I, you know, they're in their 40s and they thought, mm -hmm. but um, particularly for people in my age range, uh, it, it's very, very serious. It, it's also, um, you talk, uh, I sat in the emergency room with my father while he was dying of pneumonia. It's a really bad way to die. This is very serious, and, and if you get it, there's a tipping point. You know, you're going along, and you hit the tipping point, and, and man, you die fast. It's a very frightening disease, particularly for people over 65. The, associate, uh, the AP, the Associate Press today, reported that the CDC uh, released, or planned to release, a cautionary note to anyone over 65 not to fly. The administration then altered that, but, but the AP is standing by that original statement. Um, it, it's a pretty inconvenient thing. It's very inconvenient to cancel a meeting, but you know, several big meetings in this town have been canceled in, in throughout the area. So I can only say, uh, you know, I wish my children would listen to me more, but it's a very serious thing, and you don't want to be the person who gets lazy and somebody in the park house dies as a result of it. I mean, I'm telling you, there's a pretty good chance there'll be funerals in this town before this whole thing is over, and that may sound over the top, but I don't think it is yet. Yeah. That tipping point is 100% shut down of your lungs. Yeah, it's very serious. It's extremely serious. So I don't want to take up everybody's time. But but there's a human tendency to deny or step back and say, well, let's wait. And, uh, they just closed Italy. The nation of Italy. The nation of Italy is closed. You know, it happened so fast in Italy. Yeah. I was just going to say, at the Herald, we got a, a number of notices of things that normally I've never seen canceled before, mm. like the Vermont Philharmonic Spring Concert at the Berry Opera House is canceled, um, things like that. And there are things, Pierce Hall has canceled their big spring fun mm. Park House is doing, you know, I'm on the, on the production meeting, we're having a production meeting tomorrow night for the Players Spring Show, which could very well be, you know, that's the first thing on our agenda that should we do it. So, I mean, we're trying to take it seriously. Yeah, and and everybody should. Yeah. I, if I'm not, I haven't read the, the the notice, but two important websites really should be on the notice: the CDC yeah, website, which has that up to date map. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, currently they're off on the weekend, so they're not updating the numbers over the weekend. But anyway, so there's a national map there. Vermont wasn't on it as of yesterday. But well, there's, there's a case in Vermont now. We have in this That's town. right. What I'm saying is that the CDC website is not as up to date. The Dartmouth-Hitchcock website is brilliant. It's got really good resources. So if you can, if you the can. C the CDC has a whole you can tier add to of, that. Of, 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 of informational websites. Mm -hmm. you know, what can you do? What's uh, It's really, it's a tremendous amount of information. We try to get into two pages in this thing. Uh, and it was a great thing in the in the Herald, written by Josh White of the uh, of the uh, of Gifford, uh, which had a lot of sort of well, what can I do kind of statements in it. Uh, I mean, the most thing you can do is, is be careful, be thoughtful about, it and wash your hands all the time, but just take it seriously. That's all. That's all. Hey, all. Yeah. Hey, just one uh, fact to add to uh, the notion of spread. So I get a daily report from the health, the Vermont Health Department. There's the one confirmed case in Bennington that's been in the news. There's 234 other cases yeah. actively being monitored by the health department throughout the state. So it's it's real, it's coming, and we have to do everything we can to slow down the spread and protect our elders, particularly. There are two people in this town who were traveling who are now self-quarantined. Uh, they're doing pretty well, but there's a, there's a lot of travel in this town. There's a lot of people going through this town, so just be careful, that's all. Well, I know periodically you guys sign permits for various events, and they're always in advance. Do we have anything signed passing through this town in the next month? Not the bike rides, I think it's too early for that, but I know you not, sign various not permits. Not next month. That I, I mean, just no. that you check and make sure we don't yeah. have anything like that. <clears throat> no, that's a good point. But. All right. Um... 
it's not exactly tied into this, but we do have a liquor license application for everyone to borrow. <laughs> 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 uh, Mason? Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, with this liquor license approval with Max Valley Market, the town has a jurisdiction to be able to inform Max of Article 14. Uh, we have a situation at Max where the corporation dictates to the employees that they have to stick three beats on a styrofoam tray and wrap it in plastic. That is from the top, not from our local employees. They would actually prefer not to put those beats on a styrofoam plate. Um, we're being asked to give them a liquor license, a tobacco license, and I think they should be aware of our desire of our voters to do better. So in Article 14, took me a while to get up to speed. Are you talking about the um, our climate emergency declaration? Yes, our CED. CED? Yeah. Okay. Well, this liquor license doesn't have um, anything related to the styrofoam use there, but um, well, I, well, I can see your for point. For our board to relate to the management of Max Valley Market that they could do better for our town in approving their liquor license. A communication. You know, Mason, with, with all due respect, the, the main intent, as I understood of that, of that uh, climate thing, was to create awareness, not to get in, involved in any kind of uh, arm twisting or, or legal action against businesses or anything like that. And I think, I'm well, let me finish, let me, fin let me finish. And by hanging that kind of thing onto it, you create kind of an animosity towards the idea, which is important. So I respectfully suggest that we keep in mind that we're not talking about, I don't think, there was ever any element of enforcement. It was purely a matter of advisement and to, to look at these things through the prism of concern. That so you're talking about a whole different universe of, I think, of, of I wasn't activity. talking about enforcing anything. I'm saying a conversation of the concerns of the citizens. Because Good. as of now, Max does not care about putting those beats on a styrofoam tray. They are interested in hearing from the consumers of this community. Well, then I think the consumers of the community ought to write it all up and get it through. You could get a committee together and do something. I don't need to do that. You know? The select board is here. Well, uh, giving an approval of a an approval to sell you're, liquor You're asking the select board to, to deny something that somebody's using to stay in business. I'm not an no, important no, business. No, 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 I'm letting. No, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. In the, no, I'm not saying deny the petition. I think, you're, the I'm I think you're taking what what was done in the in the town meeting. Uh, you're taking it beyond its intention. And that's all. That's all. That's all. No. Yep. That's all right. <laughs> well, um, so I'd move to approve this. Well, Rachel, you want to discuss this more? Uh, just just a just a query. So um, the declaration, the CED, I hate acronyms, the Climate Emergency Declaration was not binding, and we all understand that. The point about the communication is, I, I think the question really is, we'd appreciate it if you have a think about how you'd like to embrace that and give it some meat. Even, even if it's a, even if it's a, even a male, if it's a beat. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. even, even, if, even if it's a, you know, a public notice indicating or somehow communicating with the businesses, because I, you know, if you're proactive about it, it can really become something beneficial. I got an idea. You okay? <laughs> I think the but I think that's going to have more effect than that seemed to Max. Well, we'll see. I know this is yeah, not a this is right? not a new um, yeah. beef with with Max and in in stories in general about their insistence on using this stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's about communicating proactively with the businesses, yeah. and yeah. it's not a binding. I totally get that. That's why I did yeah. the amendment, and according to Vermont law, so we're protected. Right. Okay. So, anybody else? to think about. It'd be appreciated. All right. I move to approve their application here. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And, um, yeah. 
I need to sign that one. Yep. And we could write a little note to, well, this doesn't go to Max, this goes to the state. So it's even including a note with this doesn't really um, uh, communicate to Max at all. So I would um, I would recommend if people are concerned that uh, even though the people that are working at Max, you go and complain to them, it doesn't matter. But um, but it's, it's worth a try, I suppose. Um, Jeanette. I personally recommend removing your produce or anything else from excess packaging, leaving the excess packaging at the cash register and letting Max dispose of it themselves. That's good, I've done yeah. it for years. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh. It's action. Yeah. And while she's at it, I've been, I'm not, you know, I, I, I've been using cloth uh, shopping bags for years, and I've seen more people starting to do that. I got the idea from someone else I knew who was doing it. And I think that's another thing that people can do so that places like Max, I mean, I don't know when plastic shopping bags are going to be um, outlawed, but July, at some point July, they are. July. Soon. July. 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 So get in, the, get in the habit, you know, of using your own cloth shopping yeah. bags. It's not hard. Um, Rachel, you any? Yeah, just just a, a brief comment. Um, I'm just wondering what the Quintown Energy Committee will be doing. Is there, a, is there a committee associated with the select board that maybe could do some public education, or at least hold an evening event to talk about the upcoming composting and recycling and great tips like that? The um, I guess that will more will become that's it's in its infancy that that committee so okay. I'm sure there will be reports to it but it's not um, there's nothing to report now other than that that the towns have agreed that they'd like to work together to work on that so yeah there's nothing to so we have report. a July first. That, that the universal recycling right. comes into effect July first, and right. that's really coming fast at us. I just thought it'd be terrific after the coronavirus if there's some public education that's done because you know some people could use a great tip like Jeanette's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saul Alinsky, 1979. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you had something that you wanted to say, Annie? Well, just that 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 energy committee is coming through two rivers that is also coming through the state mandates. Um, there is a booklet about the 90% renewable actions um, and the goals that they're setting, which is something that I mentioned at the town meeting. Um, so these it's on are a bulletin board in the other room there too. If yeah, so it would be, you know, these are concrete practical ways in which all of this will be applied. So yeah. I think they're very focused on education. I don't think we have to worry about that. I think it will happen and I think it will be announced. And, mm -hmm. So I think we're there are people that are, have our interests at hand, and they're making sure the information gets to us. So it's good that we're all concerned, but I also think that the concern is coming from the top down too. So. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, leaves us down to um, Harlan. You had uh, something you want to talk about with the, the yeah, missing what's, book? What's going on? With any news on the? Uh Last book? I have no news. Do you have anything to contribute? Just a question. No. No. Point no. me in the direction to look. I'll look. Yeah, I don't have anything. We've been kind of, kind of busy with this other stuff going on. But. Well, yeah, I yeah. understand. But this is yeah. all part of it. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that is got it covered for tonight. Thank you all for coming.